Hello, everyone, and welcome back in. Well, this is episode number three of our ISU 152 in the Battle of Berlin, the Beast Killer. If you recall from the last episode, we did a lot of the painting and the weathering, including some staining. If you recall that we were looking at some photographs and I replicated some of the stains worked on in the last episode. So check out episode two if you have missed that one. In this episode, we're going to continue with the theme, or at least the kind of the concept of how I want to start kind of moving this channel perhaps, which is to take a little bit more time, more fully develop and illustrate some of these techniques that I that I like to use, and perhaps they'll be instructive to you as well. So let's get started. Now we've got the model ready to go here, and this is basically picking up exactly where the last episode left off. So we've got those stains on the side of the hull that we have did in the last episode, so we'll just tackle this exhaust area now. The first color I'm laying down here is 502 Abtalong oil paints, and this is the engine grease. Now this is a pretty interesting type of an oil paint. It has, I guess it's a lot of linseed oil, but it, I think it also has a gloss component to it. So when it dries, you still have a bit of a glossy appearance. It also tends to be quite transparent. That's where I believe the linseed oil's kind of important in this, in this oil paint, in the use of this oil paint for these types of stains. Now on the side of the hull, I do want to show a little bit of streaking here, but I'm not going to try to go very crazy on this. Again, this paint, once it dries, it becomes more transparent. So everything I'm adding now will lighten up in color as I go a little bit further on as it dries. But I do want to establish, much as we did with the dust, dirt stains right to my right there on the side of the hole, just want to kind of lay out a little bit of a sketch pattern here. This is a little bit of the preliminary of where this is going and how I'll get there. Now this is the important part. So once I have the oil paints and they're still wet, I've just applied, this is basically in real time, I'm adding just a little bit of pigment to those, those areas. And this is a medium brown colored pigment. It's, I think it's rubble dust. Um, any color in this range will work just fine. I'm just tapping that in there. And so now the pigment is soaking up all that oil color paint. So now we're basically staining the pigments and this is going to give us that kind of grittiness and griminess and that sludgy kind of look that I'm I'm going for here where the exhaust and the oil and the grease and the dirt and everything mixed together. And I'll do the same thing here on the side of the hull as well just tapping in a little bit of those pigments and notice my brush strokes. I'm brushing upwards in most cases. So everything is going upwards because I'm really not trying to streak downwards. I'm just trying to kind of blend the pigments and the oil paints together. And then once I have these pigments applied, you can see that they've really soaked up that oil color. So now it's all nice and dry and kind of a gritty, dirty color. Now I want to reestablish that greasiness, the, the, the wetness of, of these stains. So going back to the oil or the engine grease um, oil color, just kind of tapping those on into certain places here just to reinforce and reestablish that type of an appearance. And then the same thing along the side of the hull here, just where these little bit of a streaking is going to be. This is going to be the trick here. So again, I'm reestablishing a little bit of the, the oil color there, just reinforcing it a little bit, as you can see. And notice that I'm, I'm actually cleaning things up here. I'm not really establishing a lot of color or, like I said, those bold streaks that sometimes we see on, on different models and stuff. And you can see, watch the brush strokes. I'm going upwards with the brush strokes here because I don't want to draw this down. Um, that's not my intention here at all. Matter of fact, at this point, I'm basically kind of almost cleaning up. Now, here's the trick. At the very end, I add a couple of drops of odorless thinner, and I just allow that to roll over the top of the oil paints and the pigments here on the whole side. And that's where my basically my streaking and my blending are, are coming from, is just those couple of drops. And here's a few photographs of the final results after everything has dried. Now you can let me know in the comments what you think about this idea of this approach, because at least in my eye, the idea of using the oil paints and the pigments together, that that combination provides a lot of that kind of grittiness and griminess and that sludgy kind of, I don't know, dirty, grimy kind of thing that is so often associated with, you know, around exhaust and grease points and things like that. So I think this is an effective way of doing that. One little side note, you can see the little the tops of the exhaust, I don't know what you would call those, 
manifolds or whatever, the little brackets there. Those were basically done with uh, sponge painting, so a little bit of rust and darker colors in order to get that kind of corroded effect on those. And so all this starts tying together and then just a little bit of that engine grease oil paint just around the tops of that as well, just to tie everything together. And then just one final look at this before we move on to doing something a little bit different. Well, before we move on, let me take just a brief moment to thank my Patreons who support this channel and help bring this product out to you. So if you'd like a little bit more content, I do these tutorial types of videos on the Patreon page. I do photographs of the works in progress. We talk about future projects. We have a Discord server where we have some chats going on. So if you would like a little bit more content, uh, check that out. Link for that Patreon page is below, and I'd hope to see you over there. Okay, let's get back to the show. Next up, we are going to do, there's, if you look at the photograph, and I'll put one up here right real quick, there's some, a tarp over some stowage on the rear deck. And so we're going to try to replicate that to some degree as best I, best I can. I have to give a big shout out to Steve at Value Gear who provided these parts. And I'm just kind of going through them here and trying to mock up a little bit of, you know, what, what do I need in order to build this kind of lump of stuff here that's going to be underneath this tarp. I believe I have pretty much what I need for this, but let's see what it looks like on the engine deck here. So I'll take my parts that I selected and just kind of lay them out here on the model itself now. You also might notice that I added some numbers there on the rear of the of the casement there, the 646 or 648, whatever it is, because as I started really looking at these the stowage, I realized that there was actually some numbers kind of peeking through there at the rear. So I added those very quickly as well. Most of that will be covered up as well as all these little very nice value gear pieces but oh whoops sliding around there but anyway i'm trying to figure this out in terms of does it look more or less in terms of height and depth and things like that as that photograph looks like now it's time to tie everything together this is magic sculpt two-part epoxy so you just have an a and a b side and i gotta move that and squeeze it all together and mix everything up because that's how it gets nice and hard but until it gets hard you've got a pretty good working time with this so this is you know you've got an hour hour and a half um, depending on the size of the pieces before it hardens and you can't work with it baby powder on a little bit of wax paper there so it doesn't stick yep there's the baby powder and it smells really really nice and then i'm just going to lay that down get a little powder on both sides a little bit of a brass tube there. That's my rolling pin. You can use anything for this. Of course, a rolling pin would be a great idea. This is, happens to be what I have in my junk drawer. And then just start working it out, just like you would a pie crust, just kind of moving it around, adding a little bit more flour, or in this case, baby powder, turning it over making sure it doesn't stick and just keep making it as thin as I possibly can. This will end up being, so this, I'm using the Magic Sculpt, I will be using the Magic Sculpt to supplement some of the tarping and actually kind of lock down and make sure that these boxes and everything that came from Value Gear looks like it's part of the scene versus just sitting on the top of the deck. Same idea as making sure the tank tracks are part of the groundwork versus just floating on top. So here we go. We're going to start making a few tarps. And yeah, this is a little OCD of me. Yep, I'm using a straight edge because I just want to cut these up so I have some nice edges, some nice, you know, crisp edges, even though they'll be folded up. And like I said, a lot of this will not even be seen. I just like to start with something that's got nice corners, um, good edges, things like that, and be able to, to work from there. So I have my first box. Of course, it's not laying flat at all because there's a bunch of lumps and surface detail there. This is where the tarps come in. So I've got a kind of a tarp there with a sort of a decent fold on it, kind of a natural fold, like a blanket or something like that. Lay that down over the surface. And then I'm going to add just a touch of water here. And that's just going to make sure everything sticks together. So I'm using the Magic Sculpt basically as an adhesive. So these will be permanently attached to the hull of the tank or the model. And then the Magic Sculpt kind of puts everything together, makes sure everything doesn't slide around as I start building up this little pile of supplies. 
and we have to build this up just a little bit higher of course so another blanket or tarp or something in here just to give us a nice little bit of a foundation same idea just kind of lay that in there make it look like it's got some natural wrinkles and folds a little bit of water just to make sure everything sticks together let's turn that around a little bit yet yeah, we're going to have the ammo box facing outward just kind of press that into place and we'll continue to work on here and then of course there are certain areas where I'm not going to be using these magic sculpt tarps to tie everything together and I can just go ahead and glue some of the resin parts together with a little bit of super glue and there we are we've got my stowage um, on top of there it looks pretty pretty okay pretty authentic I think so we're ready to start painting before we start tying this all together, just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already and you do enjoy this channel, please hit that like and subscribe button. It's very important. That, that gets this channel out to more and more viewers. So if you do like this and you think other people might enjoy it as well, hit that like and subscribe. If you'd like to be notified of new videos as they're being released, which is basically every Tuesday, hit that little bell. I give you a notification that new videos being released. I've been doing premieres now on Tuesday mornings, so there's a little bit of a chat that can go on at the same time. So again, everybody, thank you very much for your support. Hit that like and subscribe. Now, let's get back to it. So for the stowage, let's, uh, this is the part that gets a little bit probably ridiculous in some people's mind. I go ahead and paint everything black. Now, as I mentioned before, everything is now in place on the rear of the hole here. So everything's attached. So the Milliput or the Magic Sculpt is attached, it's dry, and now I'm starting to paint everything out. And when I mean everything, keep in mind, if you look at the photograph, there's a tarp over the top of everything. But I go ahead and just, just start painting pretty much all of this stowage as carefully as I possibly can. Why? Well, because, I don't know, <laughs> I'm not really sure because most of it will be hidden. Now, the actual reason is, is because I enjoy doing this. Um, and, it, and, and to some degree, this is how I practice, like say my figure painting, because I'm using acrylic paints here, same as I would on, on the figures. And I'm just, you know, I'm just trying different techniques and it's all, it's all part about trying to hone my own skills here. So if I can paint something that may never even be seen before like this, um, it's, a good, it's a good opportunity just to do a little bit of practice. So now it's time to work on that tarp that overlays all this and covers up all this really fancy paint work. And for that, I'm using the tissue paper. And this is that type of tissue paper you get if you get like say a package or you buy a shirt a nice shirt that's wrapped in a box or maybe your shoes are wrapped in this type of paper so you know you know it's tissue paper anyway i like to use an edge because if most of the tarps and, and blankets that i i see have a nice crisp edge on it oftentimes it's folded over and stitched up here like this as well little pva glue just fold it over and yep we're pretty easy good to go now we need it to comply to the shape and the form and actually give it a little bit of structure. So a little bit of, again, PVA glue and some water and my little lid here and just give it a dunk. Nothing too fancy here, just pull it out and start coaxing it into position. Once again, I'm looking at the reference photographs so there are certain corners that are in certain locations. And yes, I'm not making this vehicle look exactly like the reference photograph it's just kind of it's nice to follow that but if you want to pick this apart and say oh this doesn't look right this doesn't look right have at it that's not my intention here but it does give me a guideline as to how this tarp can be laid over the top of, of the stowage in a natural sort of way because again it's what i'm looking at at the photograph once I had the tarp in place, I set that aside for, I don't know, maybe a couple hours and everything gets nice and dry and that white glue keeps everything nice and now firm. So now I have a nice structure, nice foundation which to paint upon. So it's very much similar to painting, say, on if it was made out of Magic Sculpt or even resin. But I feel like the tissue paper is something that can be draped and contoured and wrinkled and such with a lot more realism. So that's why I like to use that, especially on these most visible areas. Then it's just a matter of painting it out. So a base color of a green. And then this is kind of where I'm starting to work with my figure painting and my model painting at the same time, adding some of these really stark highlights right now along the edges. And then I'll come back here in just a second and start blending them together. 
in order to get something that looks, I don't know, <laughs> presentable. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the the level of my painting right now, so we'll call it presentable, and and we'll go from there. One little detail that I did see in that photograph, and I'll try to pull that up here as well, is it looked like there was a spare track link right there at the edge of that of the stowage here. So I don't know for sure if it was or not. You can judge for yourself from the photograph. Add that in there, just a couple touches of glue to hold it in place. And then we're gonna turn back to the oils. Again, this is the nice part about soaking this tissue paper in the PVA glue because we now have a really nice foundation upon which to paint. So you can paint this exactly the same way you would or you, however you might prefer to paint. So in my case, basically laying the foundation using the acrylic paints, the lights and the shadows, the base colors and things like that. And then I can add some of the weathering, a little bit of color variations and things like that using the oil paints because as you are probably familiar with by now, I really enjoy using oil paints in working with my models. And this will bring us to the conclusion of this episode. And yes, I understand this was a very different episode the way that I've been doing it so far. Really, we only talked about two different subjects. We talked about some staining on the exhaust and then we did some stowage. If you like this idea, let me know. If you didn't like this idea where we explore things a little bit deeper and take a little bit longer time, also let me know because I'm trying to figure out how to best present what I would like to do, you know, on this channel to you in a way, in a format that's interesting and instructive. And so in the meantime, let's see what's coming up next. Well, I do have some figures, so we'll get into figures probably on the next one. I'm still waiting for the tracks to arrive. I have a little surprise there as well. So I'll, hopefully everything comes together at the same time. I could present the surprise. And I'm also starting to work on the, the base, so the scenic base. So there's quite a bit more content yet to come. Again, let me know what you think about this new format or this this little twist in the format where I spend a little more time talking about the techniques and on individual components. Until the next one, stay safe guys, take care, and of course, happy modeling.